So first we have to uh, we present you a short video to demo to shortly introduce our project. Yeah, I'm sure that, okay, so I'm sure that according to the short video, you have already known some clue of our topic. Our topic is about San Francisco crime classification. And I'm Gui Hao Liang, and my teammates are Sri Tan and Hao Yue Bai. And um, so let's look at our title. Mm -hmm. So the city, by the way, have a high crime rates besides distance only 40 miles between the area of Auckland, which is the top two most dangerous city in the United States. And our data set contains uh, incidents derived from the SPF, SFPD crime incident reporting systems. So the data ranges from the 2000, year 2003 to the year 2015. So with more than 80,000 re records and 39 categories of crime, uh, basically, what we know about the crime incidents is uh, timestamp and geographic location. So our team aims at visualization the data set and using the information from it to extract the features to train the classifier so that we could predict the categories of crimes that occurred during these two, 12 years. So here are some results we have. Uh, in order to have a clear view of all the categories of crime in the data set, so we visualize four kinds of graphs for the each category. So each crime category of 39, right? So um, the first is topographic maps for the whole 12 years. So that we could roughly know that a spatial distribution map for the certain crime. And we also have uh, 39 map, uh, we have 39 maps here, okay. And then in order to have a better analysis of the change spatial change of spatial distribution topo topographic maps for each year are plotted. So there are 12 times 39 graphs for each year. And then we to in order to find more details about the time uh, whether the time is correlated to the uh, crime category. So we uh, draw maps a month, a month in hour, so to look in detail. So let's look at the 39 uh, topological graphs uh, in detail. So let's take two as in, as our examples. So here's a topological graph distribution of drug, drug. So, um, mm-hmm. So, um, as time goes by, although there is some slight change in the contour line, the center location, yeah, do you see that, the red one? The center location uh, is slightly changes, but the center location uh, of the crime basically does not change. And the second is, and another example is for the missing person. Missing person. So um, we could see that the crime location has a wide range in this area. And it seems that the missing person often happens in these three neighborhoods, as we demonstrate. So let's go. And um, yeah, through the month of the distribution of crimes, we can know um, from these graphs, we know that the month may not have a high correlation with the crime category. However, it illustrates the uh, occurrence of the crime has increased from the 2003 to the 2009. Now it's decreasing. So let's see that. From the 2009, it decreases. So um, this is the hour distribution of the crimes. So let's look at uh, for a certain crime. So this is for the vehicle theft. So let's let's look at get a closer look at this. And so from the 2003 and to the 2005, we know that the crime 
uh, the crime has a trend of increasing, but it drops dramatically from 2005 to the 2006. So I can see. So in addition, the vehicle thief only ha often happens in the afternoon or in evening, but rarely happens around the four or five a.m. So um, the this. This part is about our feature extraction strategy. So we group by year, and we have uh, temporal features at the beginning, the month, day, and the hour. And we have uh, yeah, we take the geographic features for like longitude or latitude to uh, as our yeah main features to analysis on, and analysis on. And uh, we also take the the address features. We take. We use uh, counting-based uh, um, strategies to do some uh, analysis on that with using the log odds ratio to represent the, uh, the change of address feature. So after the principal component analysis, we know that uh, we know that the some features we have to choose. So the first seven features are selected. Okay, so here comes our evolution of classification strategy. So uh, the first strategy we choose is artificial neural network. So why we don't choose that as our final uh, strategy? Because we have a relatively small data set, which means the feature space is relatively small and can't use that AN to train for a lot of a lot of categories, a lot of classifier with a relatively small data set. And uh, also it requires a very strong computational uh, capability. So yeah, our I, uh, we think our lab cannot satisfy that. So then we choose, we move from AN to the SVM. We finally discard it because it is appropriate for a tangled feature, which means that those features are mutually uh, correlated to each other and can split it up uh, completely. And also, it's really hard to converge, and um, also, which means that it consumes a lot of time to run. So, we finally choose to use the strategy named as the uh, random forest. Because uh, it's perfect for tangled features, and uh, compared to the latter two, it's much more efficient and also it's stable in classification without meaning not changes much uh, when you run different when you run a lot of times, and also it can avoid overfitting. Mm, so we upgrade our decision tree to the gradient boosting decision tree, and uh, here's a readout of our final mm -hmm, accuracy of machine learning model. So uh, let's see in detail. So in 2003, maybe the 2004, it it is a classification accuracy. It's the lowest with the uh, about 50 percent, and the the last one. Uh, 2014, it reaches the highest with the 16.7.4, and um, yeah, so the average is about it's above the 16, which is uh, kind of distant right now. And so yeah, we try two ways to do our machine learning model to do the classification. So the first one is using is using Python, sklearner. Uh, library to do all the machine learning job to to try our uh, gradient boosting uh, decision tree and the second we use uh, spark to do because it provides spark machine learning library to do the same thing so let's get a closer look at the comparison of the two of these two so the blue represents the SK learner and the, the red is for the spark so uh, the average uh, classification accuracy, we can see that uh, this SK learner is, yeah, outperforms the Spark a lot. So we believe the reason behind it is the uh, Spark limits the maximum 
depth of the decision tree, and the、uh, itself is not that like designed for machine learning. So, yeah, it's it's originally designed for、uh, large scale of data precision. So, yeah, I will demonstrate our programs in detail. Ah,、uh, not in detail, just in brief way to show um our main. Procedure of doing this classification. So, let's first look at our scanner scripts. Sorry. So,、um, the first line is that we we use the scanner to、uh, split yeah our daytime into year, month, hours, minutes, milliseconds, or something like that. So let's run it. Go go go. Oh. Okay, so we can see.、Uh, oh, it's all down. So let's take a look at to analyze data set. Okay, so here's what we get from our pre-precision of this data based on the date time. So, oh, this is、uh, this is longitude and this is、uh, latitude. If I'm good in geography. And so here's the time. Okay, so we do this. And then get back. Then we import all the、uh, main libraries to do the jobs. Like、uh, yeah, let's include all the dependencies.、Mm -hmm. External libraries like NumPy and ScanCleaner and custom functions. So it's all written here, and.、Uh, So yeah, the function is here is like to compute the log odd ratio、uh, as we described in above, and also yeah, this is about all the crimes, right? You can see that it's a thirty nine, thirty nine types of crimes we want to we want to count their count their times. So yeah, cause log odd ratios. It's based on, yeah. It's based on the counting based of just the times of occurrence of such、uh, types types of crimes with the、uh, its address. So let's run.、It. Okay, it's running. It's all set here. So after all this preposition down, we do our main function. So. The function is the block of here is that we extract temporal and the geographic graphic features and uh, uh, conduct the PCA on the data sets to reduce the dimension of our data, and、uh, then we apply the random forest tree with the gradient boosting strategy to do all these things down. So let's run it. Okay, just wait for a second to see whether they have.、Uh, okay, so here's the results of of these years, and with this training accuracy of classification. So let's look, have a brief look at this. It's it's plotted on the results pictures. So then we step to Spark. So this is a Spark script we we've written, and we use the command Spark submit on, on the local standalone model. So let's run. Okay, I'm. I wish. Okay, it's running. So yeah, it's running with the Spark and. The so let's wait for about two minutes to see the results. Okay. So let's see, cause we put all the all this data into the same directory to see whether there's uh where's uh the results. Okay, here's the result. We can we can know the all these years, all these years. The、training accuracy, and、uh, also it's shown on our picture. 
the readout picture like this. Okay, so let's continue to our summary part. So here's our summary part. So we benefit from the the visualization procedure because we uh, from the visualization uh, procedure we know what is the uh, principal components or what is ir relative irrelative components that we want to discard. And uh, so let's for instance. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can conclude from the graph this among the 12 years of uh, prostitute. So you can see that these two places, the police can believe that these two places uh, happens, prostitute, prostitute happens in these two places with a very high possibility. And also, we know that from our um, experiment of this project, we know that decision tree outperforms SVM because uh, because the decision tree can process data that is mutually correlated with the impurity discrimination method like Gini uh, impurity or entropy purity to tell uh, apart the difference between those data that is correlated and uh, while the SVM can differentiate it, this data because uh, unless the data can be completely split out into different categories and also we we get a lot of insights from the PCA procedure because we uh, know the address we guess the address is the main uh, feature we want to use to classify our the categories but we are not sure so we do the PCA and then we know that the address it is the principal component and which is further validated by our improvement of classification accuracy and that's all of our project thanks for watching and thank you thank you